Ladies and gentlemen, it's that bloke who went on Britain's Got Talent. Doing questions for everyday items and making jokes about Simon Cowell's teeth. It's Tony Run. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, hands up if you've heard of this place before. Or give us a cheer, because we can't see your hands. <laughs> right, anyone? Oh, the yobos are in there, look at that, yeah, look at that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this place, that people have been saying that this place, they've not heard of it, but this is brilliant here. They do an improv night on a Saturday, so come on down. But in the meantime, it's our night here tonight. Hello! Yay! Right, so what I'm going to tell you about first, we've got Elliot who's coming out. He is one of my students from Victoria School. He's shown an evening to ventriloquism. Right? It's, that's, uh, that's apparently Macaton for ventriloquism. So. Right, so he's into that. He's going to come out later on and do that. We're filming it. So we are filming this. So you, with somebody you shouldn't be. Get your COVID masks back on now. That's what's going to happen, right? So here we go. Right, but I'm going to get you warmed up first. So here we go. I'm going to find out where everybody's from age-wise. Here we go. There she was, just walking down the street. Oh, we found out where all the old people are. And the show off. There we are, yeah, that's right. So here's the next one, right? Here we go. Right, I want you to think of your favourite Scandinavian pop group. Knowing me, knowing you. Oh. No, it's Abba. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that one, right? There we go. Right. Here we go. Is there something strange in a neighbourhood? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Yes, we've got the eighties. That's the eighties. Uh, the nineteen eighties, not eighties and age. Right. Some of you. Right, there we go, right, there we go, what else have we got, right? Get your hands together, get your hands together, put your hands together like that, right? You're going to have to clap, right? Get ready to clap. So no one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> <laughs> right, where's the choreographer? We need one now. That's brilliant, right? So, we're going to speak up soon, see who's going to be the loudest, this side over here. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> Over this side, who let the cats out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're overacting, you can tell they're in the business. This one, over there, over there. Yeah, that's it. Who let the monkeys out? <laughs> the rest of them are in monkey world, there we go, yeah. Right. Who let the giraffes out? <laughs> I am not going to ask him how he knows what a giraffe sounds like. There we go, yeah. Experience. Right, well, I'll be watching the telly. I'll be watching the telly. I was watching the telly. They're on again in the jungle. So, welcome to the jungle. It's at the telly. That's right. So, so, last time, what we did is we got Matt Hancock to eat a kangaroo's testicles. Yes! Right, tonight we're going to do something that the public really wants. We're going to get a kangaroo to eat back. Yeah. That's an article for anyone. There we go, yeah. But also, ladies and gentlemen, I thought uh, we could have a multibus. I thought tonight we'll have a multibus. A lot of impressions come and go. I thought, get the multibus on, you can bring anyone back that you want to, right? So, uh, Boris Johnson is back. Hey. <laughs> I forget how much I'm paying him now. <laughs> but, but this time he's come back as a celebrity chef. So, yes, hello, and uh, welcome to uh, the Boris's uh, Celebrity Chef Time. <laughs> That's right, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we are cooking this brand new thing. It's called Brexit Roast Dinners. Yes, Brexit Roast Dinners is just the same as Roast Dinners, but there's no more Brussels. <laughs> so we, uh, we gloss over the political jokes, right? Yes, so, uh, also today we're going to be cooking with Jamie Oliver sausages there. Uh, Marvelous Jamie Oliver sausages. You get the sausages there, the packets, like so. You get Jamie's picture there, like so. Underneath are the instructions, like so. So underneath this picture of Jamie Oliver are the instructions that say, Brick with a fork. We're in trouble now, that's my best guy. Yeah. <laughs> 
I said, also on the multiverse, you could have the dog from Back to the Future. He's come back as a relaxation therapist. Great Scott Money! Great Scott! 1.21 gigawatts, 1.21 gigawatts, 1.21 gigawatts. We need to get in the DeLorean. We need to go up to 88 miles per hour and relax. <laughs> That's right, Molly, this is what we're going to do. What we're going to do is this crazy stuff. We managed to do all sorts of things to help you relax. We'll try the aromatherapy. I've tried full body massages. I've tried the one with needles. What's that called? Heroin. <laughs> tried all that stuff, Molly. I've tried it all. But somebody told me what you need to do if you really want to need to relax. What you need to do, and it's very, very important that you do this, is you... Dangle your, dangle your bits into a hot liquid. I said to them, that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> Anyone not laughing, that's their cup of tea. <laughs> Be careful who you watch, right? But the thing is, we now have to get back in the DeLorean. We have to get back in the DeLorean, go to 88 miles an hour. We need to go back to 1963 and make sure Boris Johnson's dad wears a condom. <laughs> I can allow a few of you to get into that. Yes, <laughs> but when we were going through the DeLorean, what happened was we found that somebody else followed us through the space-time continuum. A block who was a Terminator. I'm a Terminator. Ask the Mephisto baby. Get out! Get out! I'm here to terminate you. I tell you, I tell you what to do. I'm in this new multiverse where I've got a brand new job. And my job is to get pieces of paper, wrap them in plastic, and melt them together. I am the Laminator. <laughs> I need to cut it down to size. Get me to the chopper. Get me to the chopper. But of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was uh, Mr. Universe, you remember Mr. Universe? Do you remember it was Mr. Universe? Arnie was Mr. Universe. He used to pump himself with steroids. He used to make him with big muscles. But it did affect <laughs> that thing I'm not allowed to talk about unless I say testicles, right? It did, it did affect his member, as they might call it, so but they decided that in this particular multiverse, instead of Mr. Universe, he's going to go into the Mr. Impotence competition. I went in to do Mr. Impotence competition. I was a total flop. I didn't come anywhere. I was up against a lot of stiff competition. But I said to them, no hard feelings. They said, do you want to go in the competition next year? I said, no, you can stick it up your ass to the Mr. Baby. <laughs> but I am here to terminate Donald Trump. It's not fake news. It's not fake news. It's all going to be great. I've just heard on the news that I'm going back into being politics. I will be president in four years time. It's going to be great, it's going to be great. But in this multiverse, I have decided that I am Donald Trump and I am a nice person. Do you believe that? No. I'm in the, multi I'm in the wrong multiverse. Right. But I said to my wife, Malaria, let's go to the top of the Trump Tower. <laughs> and me and Malaria, we were staying on the top of the Trump Tower. And I got out a hundred dollar bill. And I threw this hundred dollar bill out the Trump Tower. Valeria, she said, why did you do that? I said, it'll make someone down there very happy. She said, why don't you make them all happy and throw yourself off? <laughs> <laughs> and then my security guard, he said to me, Donald Duck. <laughs> Brandon loves Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, this is Donald Duck on his first ever roller coaster ride. Here he goes. Right.
especially in certain years, you um, you get people do uh, cold calling. You know about cold callers, don't you? Right. So whenever I, whenever I get cold callers and somebody rings me up, I always have a little bit of fun with them. So right then, get this phone call. He says, uh, "Excuse me, have you had an accident in the last ten years?" <laughs> Computer said no. <laughs> right? So I give him this, I go, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. <laughs> but I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. You'll stop this bringing this number now, or I will look for you. I will find you, and you will have an accident in your own box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and also, there's another one. From the multiverse, there's this chap. So I just have a quick, quick sit and be wild chap. Would you like a drink from the globe? Yes, it's me, Alan. Yes, it's me, Alan Carr. Hello, everyone, it's me, Alan Carr. I've just come out to say hello to all the seats people over here. Look at that. Hey. So, in this multiverse, it turns out I'm not the Alan Carr on the telly. I'm the Alan Carr, the Dr. Alan Carr that wants you to give up the fans. As if, yes, that's right. But I'm looking around at all these subjects. Now, all these people here, these are all my patients. These are all my patients who come back from there blind and with his bald head. Right? He's my patient over there. Right, that's it. He looks like one of the Mitchells from his dangers. Peggy. That's Peggy Mitchell. Close your legs, it's the point. Oh. He just white, but what's he going on here? I say yes. So yes. And it comes to lots of people in here. Look at this fellow here. This fellow here, he's in the show business. You know he's already been showing off. Right? But he is, in fact, a movie star. Shrek. No, you're not wrong. But they're all feeling sorry for you because they're not laughing. They're not laughing. I say yes. But of course. Right, there's this nice chap over here in front of me with this lovely chap here. It's looking very great, he's looking lovely, right? Now, I bet you've got a lot of money in the bank. Because you can't spend it on clothes, do you? Yeah, it's right, look at that, yes. It's me, Alan. Right, now, who else is here in my multiverse? Right, here he comes. All right, Rodney, here he comes. All right. Minus two, minus two. At point one, uh, and as they say in the, the, the doing, all right. Now, I was phoning Raquel the other day. Now, Raquel gets on the phone. She said to me, Boy, oh, there, boy, I need a new pair of boots. So I went into the shop, boots. <laughs> they don't sell boots. Right? They don't sell boots, right? So I get a lot of calls from her. She says, Del boy, you're going to run out of fruit. I said, We're running out of fruit, Raquel. So I went in the apple store, and they do not do apples. <laughs> the bloody pumpkins don't do apples, right? So then she says, our oh, fridge is on the blink. So I went into that shop, sell fridges. <laughs> no, I can wait until you've all enjoyed that one. You're all right. <laughs> sell fridges. So what did I learn? Boots don't do boots, apples don't do apples. Sell fridges don't sell fridges. But I can tell you, there's plenty of dicks in Dixons. <laughs> and don't even get me started on the Virgin Lego store. <laughs> and my biggest disappointment of all was finding out that Screwfix wasn't for baking top. <laughs> this time next year I will be. That's the most unenthusiastic bunch of billionaires I've heard this side of the good doing this. Well, what do you think of that boy, see? Well, hello, girl boy. <laughs> I spoke to my Marlene. I said, Marlene, when I die, I want to die making love. She said, at least it'll be quick then. <laughs> I said, hold on, Marlene. What about that night? I lost it 61 minutes. She said, that's the night the clocks went forward. <laughs> so I thought, right, I've got Raquel's stone here, right? And I've forgotten to bring the Uncle Albert beard. So. <laughs> Julie the Wolf. <laughs> Julie the Wolf, son. That old bump in my old girlfriend the other day, Elsie Partridge. 
Now, 60 years ago, we used to go behind the old portions and they love against the old fence. <laughs> so she said to me, Albert, how do you fancy doing it? Like we used to. I said, not off. So we went by the old bike sheds. Elsie is screaming. She's going, oh, oh, oh. oh. I said, Elsie, you weren't this good 60 years ago. She said, 60 years ago, the fence weren't electric. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, like, there's lots of famous celebrities in here. They're always in here. The famous celebrities. Because um, if we have a look over here, right? If we have a look over here, look, he's here. Who? There's Harry Hill. <laughs> right? Sat next to him is Brian May. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He's, that's it. Yes, right. So, um, who else is coming in, right? Because this time, we're going to introduce you now. On the multiverse tonight, the brand new famous super spy coming up right now. Here he is. From the multiverse far, far away, we have a brand new super spy. Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. The Osbourne identity. <laughs> I said I can bring all the old school ones back. Look at me, sir! Sir, we just had burglaries in our house and we got away with two million quid. They stole the swear box. <laughs> then, then I made another, it was called the Osborne Supremacy. That was the next film. Right, and, and what I've got to say about that is like, people are very afraid of people who've been eating bats and say, that's where you get COVID from. Well, I've been eating bats for years now, it's affected me. <laughs> and then I did the next film. What was the next film? I forgot the next film, Charlie. Here we go. Oh, the Osborne <laughs> Ian. The Osborne Ultimatum. Ozzy, you have to go to Oh, I'm leaving you. Sharon wants me to pack in the drugs. So I rang I run, I run the drugs helpline. It says, for information on cannabis, please press hash. How does that even work? I'm doing that one in Panto. Who are shooting them anyway? Right. Anyway, what happens is, and the only drug that I have nowadays is that Viagra, and I went into the chemist, I said, uh, I said, have you got any Viagra? He said, yeah. I said, can you get it over the counter? He said, I can if I take two. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got these other stuff. They got digestive biscuits made out of Viagra. <laughs> you can dump them in your tea and they never go soft. <laughs> Right, right, right. And then you can get all sorts of stuff about Viagra, right? You know, you get Viagra eye drops. It makes you look hard. <laughs> I took some the other day. It made me look cock-eyed. <laughs> right, and then it was me all the time. Yay! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There's some, there's some film stars. They can't believe that they're still film stars, like friends of Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp. Because you're forgetting one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. And I'm going to have myself a mega pint of rum. Thank you. <laughs> and so what happens when I don't have my mega pint of rum is that the bartender always tries me to make me to drink lager. He says, Who would like to drink lager? I said, I no longer partake in the Ampanetta. Some years are going to be very subtle. <laughs> for the next five minutes, you might need to just you know, go to the bar or something. Like that. <laughs> what happens is, is that Captain Barbosa, he starts coming in on the scene, and he's got a ghost ship with no crew. And what happens is Captain Barbosa shouts, Where's me buccaneers? And I shout, Under your bucking hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. And I'm doing some coming down here. See, it's coming down there. Right. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, really, right. 
Right. He thinks I haven't noticed him. Right. So I can do a very good impression of him. Right, you ready? <laughs> it's so unfair. <laughs> Why did they bring me out to this? I think you're not my parents. Oh, there we go, here. Yeah. There we go, there we go. See you. Yeah. 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 I don't know how old he is, but I think I've got underpants on them. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's time now to get another of my props, right? Now this is a fairly recent addition of my props, right, as you can see, if you have a look at that. I've had this prop since just before this truss became prime in time. There we are. I'm still waiting for most people to get that one. <laughs> but I love this one, right, here we go. <clears throat> Horse is struck with you, Obi Wan. <laughs> Master Yoda, I have noticed that you have a lettuce on your head. Mm, lettuce on my head, I have. Mm. Yes, it's enormous. Mm. Give the iceberg it is. Chips, crisps, whatever it is. Um, you've got about enough time to get a drink, but you don't have enough. Time to go to the toilet and wash your hands. Right, so we'll, we'll be with you. We'll be with you in about ten minutes. We're just going to set everything up for Mr. Elliot Gower <laughs> and the cow. Right. Oh, look at that angry little couple around. Look at that. You should have put a colostomy bag in. Right, we'll see you again.